Jay Clark here. We're going to go over how to change the rear tire on this CRF. Similar setup as a, as a Yamaha. They both, both have a similar setup with the rim lock uh, opposite the valve stem. So um, we change them the same way. Um, give you a little idea how we do it. Um, so let's go through it. Okay, so we let, the valve, we let the air out of the valve stem and we pull the little Honda rubber piece off, which is cool. And we're going to back our valve stem, I mean our, our I'm sorry, our rim lock. Back the nut out and you want to back it out. You don't want to take it all the way off. It keeps it a little easier if you keep it right at the edge. And I start a little ways away from the rim lock and I'm popping the tire off the bead before I get started here. When I was a kid I used to do this on the ground. It's a whole lot easier this way on a stand, a nice stand. Okay, so I got it all the way off this side. Flip the wheel over, do it on the disc side, popping it off. Okay, so now I start about a quarter, now the tire's all the way off the beat. I start about a quarter of the way or so away from the rim lock. Just get right, right under the tire with a spoon and I slide it right under the disc. Now here I must just be about an inch and a half, two inches away. Take my second one. Now you can get away with just two spoons if you want, but if you have a third one, it's a whole lot easier just, just to grab another one. Now you're down just to two is all you'll need. Taking these bites like an inch and a half apart. So tires off all the way one side. Now the old days we used to pull the tube out. Now some guys do that. I just find it's easier just to pull the tire off from the other side. So I put my, so we're gonna do the same thing we just did. Going right under the sprocket, inch and a half, two inches away on our bites. Popping those out. So about one more. Okay, so now our tire's all the way off. Now it's easy to go right next to the rim lock. Just pull the tire down. Comes all the way off. So at this point, I'll just put the wheel right back on here. Just double check that the band's okay. You know, if you have duct tape on your rim, you want to check all that. Make sure no spokes are sticking through, anything crazy here. Kind of cleaning that up. We're ready to put our new uh, MX-51 on this thing. So at this point right here, I put the tube all the way inside the tire, which is a step that a lot of people you know, aren't used to. But if you get used to it, it's a lot easier. Put the valve core in the stem. Tighten that back down. It's a good idea to put the tire out in the sun for, some, for a bit if you like. Get it a little softer, easier to work with. Um, I got a little too much air in here, so I'm going to let a little air out of the tube. It needs to just, just kind of hold it just a little bit firm. You don't want to have too much air in there. So at this point we're going to lube up the tire with some tire paste. Um, any automotive type tire paste is better than most you know, soap and water or anything else you could use. This is because it, it stays slippery and then dries, dries nice and tacky. Get it all on there really nice. Now this tire is not directional, so we just go right in either side. So now I put the valve stem through the hole in the rim. And I'm going to use my nut. I'm going to thread that on about three-fourths the way or so. And then I'm going to feed the tire on, and I'm feeling underneath. I can feel that the tire is underneath the tube. And I'm pushing the tire on. And then I'm going to start taking bites now. And up here I'm just taking bites and I have to lift up a tiny bit. Lift up just a hair. And my last bite I can kind of pull up and I'm in. So now our rim lock is stuck. So our rim lock's on the wrong side. So all, all we have to do here is we just get a, uh, our spoons like this, hit that rim lock down, pull it up. Rim lock moves nice. Let it right back down. It's all really right back there, easy to go. So now on our last side, we put our spoons about five inches apart. Hold them like this, put one of these bead buddies in there. Throw it out like that. Now I'm taking bites about an inch and a half 
apart, and I'm pushing down on the tire to keep it off the bead. On a rear, you just want to take your time and take slow bites, and then even as you get going, come over here and knock the tire off the bead. And I'm pushing really hard to make sure the tire stays off the bead all the way around. So now with the points, probably just one more. Slide it in real careful. Now at this one, I can hold down. Pops right in because we've got some nice lube on there. Come over here, lift, push down, I can pull the bead buddy out. So at this point, we're going to air the tire up. This is where having some good air pressure is nice because you fill it up quickly. And so we look all the way around. It's always a good idea to check all the way around to make sure you're all the way on the bead that's seated. It's nice and warm today, so the tire's popping right on. If it's cool out, it's a lot harder. So we got all of our air in here. So right now we're going to go to our rim lock, tighten up our rim lock. Nice ratcheting uh, wrench is nice. I wouldn't use a ratchet or anything really long because you'll put too much leverage on it and can break the rim lock too easily and risk uh, bowing out your rim as well. Do so you want to just get it nice and snug? About right there. Then you come over to the valve stem, you pull the nut off. We put that rubber piece back on that Honda gave us here. And we're going to check the pressure. Good idea. Most outdoor use, 12 to 14 pounds pressure. Um, I'm going to set this one right at 14. Probably not going to ride for a couple days and put our cap back on. So now that we're all done, this wheel is ready to hit the track. So hopefully we'll see you out there soon.